You're watching Kenosha Community Media. Well, hey, Jason, for me, either he wants to say something or eat something, one of the two. Take the opportunity to put our musical uh, interests. Acting, in. dancing, and now singing a Grammy award. Laura Pepper. Movies and, uh, and particularly night shift and, and you did gum home. <laughs> really? Never knew that. Welcome to Just Talking. We have a great show for you today. We are here at Milwaukee PopCon, so let's go on in. Okay, here we are at PopCon Milwaukee, and I'm with Dr. Destruction and Lilith Lovecraft. And uh, for, start off with first is what is PopCon Milwaukee? Well, it's a multitude of different things. You have everything from athletes to pro, uh, pro wrestlers to artists to uh Horror hosts and a lot of horror merchandise. Uh. PopCon truly is a celebration of pop culture and everything that is pop culture in Milwaukee. It's really great that they bring in all these in, these national guests, international legends, and yet a lot of local people as well. I like your booth here today. What do you got to offer here today? Oh, we've got some uh, photos, t-shirts, original paintings, uh, and uh, a lot of fun stories. And I see Lilith, you got some photos too as well. Are, do you uh, autograph today? Yes, I'm doing some autographs of some of my modeling prints and uh, having great conversations with people about pro wrestling and horror hosts. It's been really fun. Excellent. And then, of course, we got to plug your Dr. Destruction's TV show and the uh, Big Top Radio show. Big Top Radio broadcast, AM 1050 WLIP, midnight to 4 a.m., uh, Monday through Friday. And then, of course, uh, Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater, which can be seen on Channel 14 in Kenosha, uh, Saturday, 9 o'clock. 3 o'clock on Tuesday, 3 p.m., and uh, midnight on Friday. Well, it's a great uh, event today, great turnout, and thanks so much for talking with us today. Hey, anyway, you got one last thing One to more say? thing. Uh, Killing Poe is now available on Amazon, so it's a great film. Check it out. All right, check out Killing Poe. It's a great time here at uh, Milwaukee PopCon, and thanks so much for talking with us today. Cool. Thank you. Okay, here we are at PopCon Milwaukee, and I am with your name. Alice Wilson, Living Statue. Alice, this is really, really cool living statues. How did you get started into this? Well, I've been doing theater since I was eight years old and art modeling for 13 years, and the two things just sort of collided. Excellent. Excellent. Very, I'm, like for this uh, uh, costume and makeup, how long did it take to put together? About, well, it took about two hours to get ready today, but it took a couple of months to find all the costume pieces and get them painted and, and all of that. Yes. <laughs> If anybody wants to see uh, more of your displays, uh, do you have an event page or anything, or a website? or? A I do. I have a website, which is alicelivingstatue.com, and I'm also on Facebook at Alice Wilson Living Statue. Well, you're doing a great job. Great added event to the uh, PopCon Milwaukee, and thanks so much for talking with us today. Okay, here we are at Milwaukee PopCon in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I am at the R2 Builders uh, booth, and uh, your name? Jake. Steve. Kevin. And uh, well, how did you, first of all, what's your booth about? Uh, we are the, uh, the R2 Builders. It's a, uh, a global club uh, that is devoted, it's a fan club devoted to building R2-D2. Uh, or any astromech, as you can see, uh, sometimes uh, our, our members like to customize so that when we line up like this, you can pick yours out in a crowd. <laughs> right, right. Boy, I mean, the R2-D2 is just exact. How do you, where do you start? Do you, you get diagrams of the original, or how does that work? The, the club actually, we have a few builders that were allowed into Lucasfilm, and they get, were able to take measurements of every part, and they drew up blueprints from them all. So... Um, that's pretty much what happened, and we, we have access to all those prints, and we can make the parts as we choose. And then they're remote controlled by, like, a controller? It's like a PS2. We, which one do you want to look at? <laughs> the, 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 uh, the remote control airplane controller is, is like how the club started, and um, it evolved into using uh, game pads. And then I noticed even the little droid uh, there on the table. Um, did you guys design that too as well? That's a uh, that's a, uh, what's known as a mouse droid, an MSE droid. They're messenger droids on the Death Star. Uh, my wife actually built that one, so we're a family of builders. <laughs> um, is there a website or a uh, Facebook page that you guys have that we can get more information? Uh, yes, the website is astromech.net. For 
but this is a great uh, addition to this uh, PopCon Milwaukee, and it's a great uh, R2 Builders booth, and thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, here we are at Milwaukee PopCon, and I am an uh, excellent uh, actor here, uh, Jackson. Hey, how's it going? Nice to see you, Jackson. Uh, for those who don't remember you, you're an excellent uh, show, uh, Shazam, correct? And how did you get involved in that? Well, that was something I got sent out on, got the part, and uh, I, I thought it was when my agent sent me out, I thought it was a serial like Captain Crunch, he, because he was a commercial agent that sent me out on it. But anyway, I went there and then found out that it was a serial and, and uh, got the part. And ever since, you know, I'd well, let's talk about the uniform, the suit, the costume itself. Was it tight to get into, or no, no, not at all. It was a uh, Western costume. Made it. The cape was, was silk. I mean, it was heavy. Uh, the boots were custom made leather. So, what do you think about the old TV shows compared to today? Well, there's no comparison. Uh, you know, and I, I, I hope everything works out all right. Uh, I'm not real thrilled of what they're doing with Captain Marvel now uh, and what they're doing with Black Adam. It's just not... I was good friends with C.C. C. Beck, who was the original uh, artist for that, who uh, had chosen uh, uh, to Fred McMurray as his uh, model to make Captain Marvel for him. But I, he and I talked about it all the time, and... I think I'm going to be the last one to wear this costume because they've got it now. It looks, it looks like something out of a Gucci, uh, you know, fashion book, hoodie, and uh, it's just it's terrible. Uh, why do you think people are just have this uh, fascination and love for uh, the old comic book character? Well, because exactly that, it's 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 fantasy. I mean, nowadays, yeah, you got a lot of nice special effects, but you don't have any story. It's a carnival ride. Uh, I wish we had some of those effects when we were, you know, in some of the uh, movies I did with Tron uh, for Walt Disney. I mean, now they can ju just do all kinds of stuff that uh, they couldn't do back then. Uh, oh, let's talk about, are we talking the 82 version of Tron? Or the, the, the original. original. Wow, that was a phenomenal movie, my God. Uh, what, uh, how, how did you get involved in that one? Well, I, I did over, I did over thir involved in over 13 movies at Disney. Gus, Captain Mouter, you, you know, go down the list. Uh, Devil and Max Devlin, Apple Dumpling Game. Did, I some, did some voices. I, did, I was in some, like uh, uh, Secret of Lost Valley and, and My Science Project. But anyway, this, uh, uh, the thing with the um, um, Tron, <clears throat> we were filming in front of sodium screens. Back then, they called them sodium. Uh, that's what Disney used, not blue screen, but sodium. <clears throat> and you couldn't tell what were you, you know, you'd look out and they, you could go look at the storyboard and halfway see where you are and stuff. And you're looking out at just nothing but a blank screen. What character did you play? I was the head guard. I'm always with Stark or I'm pushing Jeff around. Ah, how was it working with David Warner? Oh, it, it, great. I mean, it was, it was fun. I mean, Disney was fun. First movie I ever did out there. Now, I've, my scene happened to get cut out, but that was uh, Island at the Top of the World. With, uh, and that was a, really a good little uh, movie. Uh, what do, you, do you have anything that you're upcoming in now that we could talk about? No, I'm raising a daughter right now. Yes. So that's, that's my, main, my main goal. I do, I do some of these uh, uh, conventions, get around. Well, we appreciate you coming down to the Milwaukee PopCon. Shazam, an excellent show as well. And Jackson, thanks so much for talking with us today. Yeah, hey, here we are at Milwaukee PopCon, and I'm with John Schneider. Excellent. Hey, hey, hey. Nice to see you. And you brought the General Lee, which is I very did. Awesome. It was hard. It was, uh, it was more than a carry-on bag, I'm afraid. <laughs> it was. <laughs> right. Uh, love the show, uh, Dukes of Hazard. How did you get involved in that? Oh, my gosh. Well, I was, uh, I was 18 years old, and I'd been doing theater for 10 years and heard about these auditions, so I, I went to, uh, to an audition in Atlanta, Georgia, told them I was from uh, a farm and 24 years old, and actually I was 18 from New York, and uh, kind of shuck and jive my way into the audition. So uh, they liked what they saw, and a couple weeks later I had the, had the part. Was the show as fun to make as to watch? Absolutely. 
You know, which is one of the strange things. I've done a lot of shows since then, and it's a lot of work. I mean, we did we worked 12 hours a day, five days a week, so it was a lot of work, but the cast was so lovely. We loved each other so much. We got along so well, and still do. Uh, and, of course, a bunch of us are mourning the loss of a bunch of us. But, uh, yeah, it was a wonderful experience and still is. I, I still mark it right up there with the, the, best, uh, the best part of my life. What did you think of the movie version when it came? The movie was awful. Yeah. The movie would have to get considerably better to stink. Exactly. I, I, yeah, it was irreverent. Dukes of Hazard was a lot of things, but it was, certainly was never irreverent. Uh, well, let's talk about what you got upcoming in the future that we can... Um... Well, I have a show on now called The uh, Haves and Have Nots, a Tyler Perry show. It's on every Tuesday night. Uh, this is our fifth season, so we're, uh, we're doing really well with that. Uh, I have a movie studio and music studio down in Louisiana. So you can go to johnschneiderstudios.com and check out all of our movies like Like Sun. We have one of the stars of uh, Stranger Things is in Like Sun. One of the stars of Walking Dead is, is in uh, Four to Go, which just came out uh, Friday the 13th. So oddly enough, when we were doing this show, I wrote and directed the last episode of Dukes of Hazard, And that's really what I thought I was going to be doing. And it took... Almost 40 years after Dukes of Hazard, for me to finally, uh, finally stop doing other things and really try to tell my own stories. Yeah, because yeah, I'm a storyteller, really. That's what it all boils down to. And that goes along with the music. Is that how you got into music? Yeah, yeah. And I've always been attracted to great storytellers: Johnny Cash, Merle Haggard, uh, Boxcar Willie, way back when, Willie Nelson. Uh, songs that that were wonderful stories, all in very, uh, very few words just recorded a song called I'm in love with her she's not in love with me tells a great story right there that's kind of the whole story yeah, <laughs> right but uh, yeah so I'm uh, I'm having more fun now at 57 years old than I've had in my entire life uh, as much fun as this was I'm having more fun now what do you think of the event today this week it's great it's hard not to be a fan when you're uh, when I mean it, it, it's hard not to just wander around and look at the cool things here and talk to uh, talk to great people. Uh, so it's uh, it's like Shazam just wandered by. You know, it's a uh, it's it's a great it's a great event. The people who come to these things are really fantastic. Uh, they are uh, delighted to be here, and it really makes uh, it it makes what we do I think worthwhile. Plus, we get to go out and be uh, be a bit of a fan ourselves. Yeah, great, great guest as well as you here today. And John, you're just an excellent actor and singer and performer. And your website, one more time? JohnSchneiderStudios.com. Movies, music, everything. Even hats. <laughs> okay, here we are at uh, Milwaukee PopCon. And I am with Sam Jones. And it, Sam Jones from Flash Gordon. And he's signed some great autographs here at the Milwaukee PopCon. And... Uh, Sam Popcorn Milwaukee, something like that, something right? That. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. Yeah, great people in Milwaukee, a uh, nice little turnout. Of course, we have some legends here today. Mm -hmm. we got Spider-Man, we have uh, Shazam, right? Yeah, great. Uh, Flash Gordon, an excellent film. How'd you get involved in that? Well, I mean, you know, what any actor does, you, you go to Hollywood and you, you, you get a job. First thing you do is you get a job. That means whatever it takes, waiting tables or whatever. And then you uh, choose a really good uh, acting class, and then uh, and that'll most likely lead to representation. Now you're out there auditioning and doing the meet and greets and all that. Why do you that think? That was exactly 40 years ago. Wow! And it still holds up today. Why do you think that film is just so good uh, even today? Well, it is. I mean, it's just it's. Uh, well, I think it had a lot of things going for it at that time. Uh, De Laurentiis brought in the same creators who did uh, all the Fellini movies. So, I mean, visually, it's a masterpiece with all the, the production quality. And you were, uh, were you surprised when you got picked to uh, be in the Ted movies? No, 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 because um, that's what happens years later. Yeah. This, young, this young boy by the name of Seth MacFarlane, when he was eight years old, saw the movie. It impacted his life, and he called me... Uh, what is that? Thirty well, thirty-seven years later. Yeah. And one last question: uh, You got anything for the future that you're? Working? Yeah, yeah. We did three films last year, two two this year, and uh, moving onwards and upwards. It's wonderful. <laughs> okay, here we are at Milwaukee PopCon, and I'm with your name, Ron Marth. 
Ron, nice to see you today. Uh, what booth do we? What do you got going on well, here? Basically, I got <laughs> movie posters, a ton of movie posters. I got them all alphabetized, and then I brought some stuff from the Bucks and uh, the Brewers and the Badgers, and I mean, I, I got so much stuff of make your head spin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, are you a fan of the the Milwaukee sports? Milwaukee sports, yes. Um, actually, when when Favre when they won the Super Bowl, um, I actually brought all the Packers into State Fair. We did a show, and I, they signed autographs for everybody. And then I did it the next year too. I used to have a radio show on WTMJ, and uh, yeah, those people would call in and ask appraisals, what I would appraise stuff for them, what it's worth. Um, and then I had four or five stores, but it's it's always been a lifetime of. Of like my wife always says, and I still do stuff, and I hope she's not listening. It's like every day she says, I bring something home, she says, Ron, 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 you don't get it. It's supposed to go out, not in. <laughs> and I keep bringing stuff back. So that's why Troy is a friend of mine, and he said, Ron, you got to get rid of some of this stuff. So I brought all those hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of movie posters. And, you know, even some of the stuff is original, like it's Glenn Robinson's jersey. I mean, just something that the Bucks hum up in the, in, in the, in the Mecca. And it's like, you know what, if somebody can buy it, and the prices are, I don't care. Seriously, I don't care. It's whatever, if just give me a fair price and it's yours. It's not about money, it's about somebody enjoying it. That's what this thing should be, about enjoying it, right? Absolutely. Everybody's having a fun time, and when you, they see these posters, it kind of brings back some memories of what they uh, yeah. saw as well. Uh, what's one of your favorite posters? You know, to be perfectly honest, um, I probably like the act of valor or something like that because it's about what our service people have done for us and how we should appreciate them. I mean, I, was, I wasn't I was in Vietnam, but I was in the service in the Philippines and I, I know what we went through and it's like, you know, I don't think we really appreciate. This probably won't get on and I shouldn't say this, but I don't care what anybody says. The prejudice and stuff that's going on today, it's the worst in my lifetime. And people look at me like, you're nuts. And I go, let me tell you something. I went through the race riots. I went through all that. It's worse today. People are angry. I mean, you're going 55 on the freeway and they're going by you 90. And it's like, what's wrong? Why are we so angry? You know, if you cut your wrist, isn't it all red blood? Aren't we all the same? I don't care who we are. But no, people are angry. That's why this, I thought this is nice. People like this. They're having a fun, right? They're meeting people. I mean, isn't this, this is nice. What was one of your popular ones that you sold? Uh, probably, the, probably um, the Spider-Man, and um, you know, a lot of people are doing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it, believe it or not, Magic Mike, because the people can buy. Hey, there you are, you're Magic Mike. You know, the the wives are saying that to the husband. So, <laughs> popular one uh, as well. And um, do you have? Do you go to other conventions, or can people no, no, contact no. you? Online? No. I haven't done anything in 25 years. Uh, the only reason I did this show was because Troy, you know, who put it on, keep badgering me, Ron, you got to do something, do something. You've got all these posters, give people a chance, Ron, they're sitting in your basement. So I did it, I did it for Troy, you know, well, you know what I mean, I mean it nicely. Well, you got a great booth. It's uh, a great event, and thanks so much for talking with us oh, today. It's my hey, here we are at Milwaukee PopCon, and I'm with your name. Mike? Mike, uh, what boy? What a great booth you have Thank here! You. Uh, let's hear about this. What, 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 tell me about your booth. It's all pop culture, all Disney Anna, lunch boxes, Viewmasters, Monster High, you name it. Anything pop culture. Wow. Um, I love the Viewmasters. All Viewmasters too. Is this stuff you collected over the years? Or I bought all this stuff in the last four years. Really? Oh yeah. Like from eBay or? Um, just private estates. When you do, when my full-time dealer, you go all over the Midwest and you sell and you buy. What do you think of the event today? It's a lot of fun. Second year here, great celebrities, nice people to deal with, a lot of fun. Absolutely. Um, is if anybody want more information, do you have like, uh, are you going to be on at other conventions or? Is I'll be at a show in St. Charles, and then I got all my stuff at the Volo Antique Mall in McHenry, oh. so I sell stuff there too, and I do shows all over the Midwest. So I'm at Elkhorn, I'm all over the place. Great, great. Yeah, tell us about that Volvo. Uh it's an antique mall in McHenry. They have a car museum, like the Dukes of Hazzard car, and then they have four buildings of just antiques and all that stuff. A lot of fun. Well, great event. Great. Thanks so much for uh, coming out to this event. you got probably one of the best boots here. Oh, thank you. you got to do your best. <laughs> thanks so much for talking well, to Thank today. you so much. I appreciate it.
As a parent, I know one of the most important times to be with your children is when they aren't feeling well. For many families, there's a place they can go to find the support they need. Ronald McDonald House Charities programs provide that supportive environment so families can be together while their children are dealing with serious illnesses. You can volunteer your time at a local Ronald McDonald House or drop your change in an RMHC canister. Today is a great day for all of us to show our support. To find out how you can get involved in your community, visit rmhc.org. Okay, here we are at Milwaukee PopCon, and an honor to be with one of the special guests here, Danny Siegman. Danny, nice to see you today. You are in a great, uh, you're actually Spider-Man in uh, the electric company. Uh, how'd you get involved in that? Well, I've worked in Sesame Street. I was with the Muppets for a long time. And I, so I knew everybody at the, the, the production company there. So I heard they were cast, casting a Spider-Man. And uh, so I went and got myself an audition. And I did a great audition, and I, I got hired on the spot. Were those episodes fun to make as to watch? Yes, it was. Just, just one more thing. I, I was a professional dancer before I worked with the Muppets, so I had this dan a lot of dance training. And that, they wanted someone who had the moves, you know. The, right, right, right. right. Um, how about the cast there, the Crank and uh, Morgan Freeman and all the other cast? Rita Marino was in the cast. And, yeah, it was, they were great people. They were Everybody was very talented, and most of them did multiple, they all did multiple characters. Why was that uh, show still special, just uh, still talked about today? Well, it had good writing, it had a great cast, and there was a need for that show. It was a remedial reading show for kids who didn't learn to read the first time around. Target artists was seven to ten year olds. Sesame Street was three to five year olds, so that was a pre-reading show. Did you start with the Sesame Street from the beginning or kind of later? Yeah, I was there day one. Really? I was, I was only there a few years. Okay, but still, you, you were there in this conception. I think uh, Cooney, uh, Gail, uh, who started the action? Joan Gantz Cooney. Cooney yeah. And then Jim Henson, you obviously. Well, she got a couple of people. One of them was a guy named John Stone as a producer. And he'd come off Kangaroo. And he knew Jim. And he, he, got, he got the Muppets involved, which really made it a, a, big, a big deal for that show. That was the most popular thing on that show. Not that the cast wasn't good, but, but, but the Buppets were just, you know, they're, they're irresistible. Uh, how was it working with Jim Henson? Great, great guy, absolutely. I can't believe he's been dead 27 years. So you offered to the, to the channel and to the world, basically. Now, what did you, were you a puppeteer? Yep, in the, in the first couple of seasons, there were, just, there were just three puppeteers, Frank Oz, Jim Henson, and me. Yeah, in fact, the guy that's producing this, this Comic-Con, Troy, he had a bunch of pictures here today. Big, big thing with Bert and Ernie with the puppets, and there was, there was Frank and then Jim, and I was doing Ernie's right hand with my nose in Jim's armpit. <laughs> he worked very closely. Anyhow, so he had me sign a hundred of those. He's, he's, he, he deals with pictures a lot. That's what was so neat with those puppets is that, you know, the stage had to been built at a certain level to give that illusion. Yeah, but it was just, it's just a play board, and sometimes it, sometimes it has a ledge on there, but you, you want it just to be, you don't want to get your head in the shot, and you don't want to work like this all day. So, so they, and they shoot a little flatter. Was it fun on the Sesame Street? Uh, so, so, absolutely, absolutely. Did you expect those characters just to live on uh, as they, because you said you were there from day one? I don't think anybody figured it would last 58 years. Uh, did you, were you involved? 48 years. Were you involved in any of the other productions, like the Dark Crystal or anything? I was not involved in those. But I, I did, after I did Sesame Street, I, got, I was on Electric Company for three years. And then a while later, I was three years on Captain Kangaroo. So that's, you know, the, the big three at that time was bang, bang, bang. So what do you feel about the children's programming then compared to now? Well, I think, I think in some ways they were better shows. They, they, a lot of the stuff in those is fast and, and loose. And um, oh, how is the suit for the uh, Spider-Man? The suit? Well, I have the suit right here. So this is the original suit that you wore on Electric Company? Yes, it is. This is the one. Yeah. Easy to get in and out? Or? Pretty easy. Well, I was a dancer. I was used to putting on. This is like a like a one piece unitard with legs in it, and and um, yeah. So you know, it, it took a you know, a couple of minutes, but but it zipped across the shoulders. That's the, that's how you got in. Was it was it funny when you actually because you did the moves, but then when you actually watched the episode, you know they added the sound effects to make it more. What did you think of it? 
I thought it made it a little better. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, well, actually, that character Spider-Man, you know, which this summer they came out with the movie, and really it all kind of stemmed from... Well, I, I don't... They hadn't thought back in the, in, in the 70s, they hadn't thought about exploiting Spider-Man that way and putting him in the movies. Yeah, right. And when that hit, it became a franchise. I mean, it's huge. The, the Tobey Maguire one, the first one, was... It was it was a great show. I might they may have watered it down a little bit with doing four of them, but people still love it. Uh, and let's talk about the future. Are you doing anything recently that we can see or anything? Actually, I'm I'm not. Um, I'm living in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and there's not much work down there. If I was in New York, I'd probably be you know sniffing around for something to do. But um, but pu puppets are kind of kind of falling out of favor in some ways. Animation is everywhere. Well, again, there was something special about that puppetry that brought it alive, and, and that was great that you were involved in. So once again, the Sesame Street and Electric Company is just groundbreaking material, and and it just still lives on today. And Danny, we thank you so much for coming out to Milwaukee PopCon. It's a great event. Thanks so much for telling us today. Thank you. Okay, here we are at uh, the Milwaukee PopCon, and it's just a great event today. And I'm with your name? Lydia Green. Lydia, thank you so much for coming to this event today. What do you think of the event? This is a, a fabulous event. Everybody is so nice, and there's all kinds of characters and vendors, and it's been a pleasure. Well, you're a popular booth because you were part of the Star Wars uh, Return of the Jedi. Um, how did you get involved in that film? Well, I've done some films. I lived in L.A. I'm originally from Detroit, so I did some movies and different things and improv comedy, and I worked on a movie called Under the Rainbow. Yep, with Chevy Chase and Carrie Fisher. Oh, yeah. And the guys that did the casting, a year later, Lucas um, contacted them to say, we need like 50, 60, 70 Ewoks in the States. So they, they were good friends of mine that did the casting. And so they said, how would you like to go on location? And I said, is it a costume? Because I didn't like costumes. And he goes, yeah, but we got stunt people to do most of them. And I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. And then I ended up doing two of the big scenes on the glider and then going through the walker where Chewbacca had the two Ewoks and I had a club, beat up the stormtroopers and threw them out of their seat. So both of those scenes that I did both have, um, the characters have action figures and, and, and I didn't end up on the cutting room floor. So that was pretty cool. Uh, what did you think of the movie when it was all done and you saw it in the theater? Yeah, because it's so different. When you're doing blue screening... You're just in front of a screen, mm -hmm. and then they add all the stuff in there and stuff. So it's really kind of hard to tell, even though you're on the set every day. We worked five weeks. We did six, six days a week, 12 hours a day. You don't really know what it's going to look like and how it's all going to be edited and fit together. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. How was it working with uh, George Lucas? Very nice. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, was a good guy. Yeah. And then did you meet the other cast, like Hans, uh, Harrison Ford and some of them? Yes, I worked with uh, Mark Hamill. Uh, the week that I was in, doing special effects at Industrial Light and Magic. And then Carrie Fisher, I also worked with Under the Rainbow. And Harrison Ford, very nice, kind of quiet, keeps to himself. Yeah, but he was a very nice person. That Under the Rainbow, it must have been a, a blast or one big party. To it was one big party, let me tell you. Yes. Uh, a, anything that we should look forward to upcoming? Are you working on any projects? Um, I've been doing since uh, I moved back to Michigan. My whole family's there in the Detroit area. And I've been doing stuff working with people with disabilities. I do a lot of training um, all over the country. And I work with um, Delta Airlines for their uh, travelers with disabilities. And I'm in the process of writing a book and all of my adventures and stuff. So... Well, we thank you so much for coming to this event. Uh, it's uh, going to be a great time, and thanks so much for talking with us today. Oh, you are so welcome.